Good morning. During the declared emergency in the City of Toronto, Committee of Adjustment virtual public hearings are being conducted by electronic means through WebEx, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and a provincial order that limits attendance at public gatherings. This will be a virtual public hearing and participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx, an online event that is being moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting either by their computer, a phone or tablet app, or by telephone. All participants will be automatically muted on entry, and when your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. Only the committee members will be participating by video, uh, and actually in Toronto, uh, Etobicoke, York, we have three members present. On my left, Sophia Ruddick. On my right, Robert Taylor. I am your chair, Michael Clark, and we have one member uh, participating uh, virtually. That's Danny Bellissimo. So any uh, registered participants, however, are participating only by audio, and we ask that you mute your devices until you are called on to speak. Land acknowledgement. We acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations. Inuit and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act, 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is now called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to the property, permissions to extend or alter lawful non-conforming uses, and consents to sever property to create new lots. Anyone who wishes to receive a copy of the decision of the committee on an application must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, your address, and email address because Committee of Adjustments and the T-Lab in the event of an appeal will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you don't agree with the decision of the committee rendered here today, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, TLAB, or in some limited circumstances to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, LPAT. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The hearing procedure is as follows in the virtual setting, unlike uh, non-virtual, where we vet the agenda and do the uh, un- um, uncontested applications first. In the virtual world, we go in order, so we start at number one, and we plow through the agenda in order. We will deal at the beginning with some preliminary issues dealing with uh, deferral requests. In some cases, the deferrals are uh, going to be required because of uh, missing variances. So I'll call each item in the order listed in the agenda. When your application is uncontested, the agent or, or applicant will proceed with a presentation only if required. The committee may ask questions or take the matter into committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant agent in making their submissions, will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. And Mr. Taylor, who is watching the clock, will comment when you're reaching uh, the five-minute mark. When addressing the committee, please state clearly your name and address at the outset, and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application. The applicant or agent proceeds first, makes a presentation to the committee of the application. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to the proposal at the hearing today. The committee may decide in that case, in event of revisions, to defer the application of being substantially revised to ensure that the revised application is both accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application are informed of the changes. Once the applicant has presented their uh, made a presentation uh, explaining their, their application. Then individuals either in support or opposed to the application will be invited to speak. Usually it's mainly people with concerns or in opposition. 
and um, we have the speakers list of people who are registered to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker, including the applicant agent and neighbors, after they finish their presentation. And when all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent is given a brief opportunity, again, another five minutes or a little more if necessary, if there's been extensive and a lot of people speaking in opposition, has an opportunity to rebut only those issues that have been raised by the neighbors, not to uh, introduce new information or evidence, but just to respond to those issues and questions that have been raised by the neighbors. That then marks the end of discussion on a particular application. The application is then taken to committee for a decision. You may hear a discussion, you'll hear a motion, and a decision will be made on your decision. Okay, uh, so before we get started, some uh, preliminary matters. First of all, we have to con confirm confirmation of the minutes of the last meeting. When was the date of that meeting, uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer? September 15th. Okay, September 15th. I guess these members weren't here, but uh, all members uh, are entitled to make motions to approve minutes, which have been circulated to those people yes. who Danny heard the applications. Here. So can I have a motion to approve the minutes, please? I so move. Thank you, Mr. Bellissima. I will move. You are here. You are attending that mission meeting as well. So yes. Thank you for that motion. Do you have a second for Mr. Bellissimo's motion? Thank you, Mr. Taylor. All in favor? Motion, uh, the minutes are approved. Uh, any declarations of interest of panel or staff on the matters before us in the morning's agenda? None to declare? Okay. And Madam Secretary Treasurer, I guess then we have some preliminary matters. First of all, I guess we have some files to be closed. Yes, we have a consent with the two related minor variances for 91 Lawnborough Avenue. Uh, no work was done, and this is previous to the current refund policy, so the members would have to make a decision both on closing and to refund the fees. That would be, uh, so this would be an appropriate situation to refund the fees because no work was done on the file. I believe that's less than $100? Yes, or? correct. Okay, so can I have a motion to that effect on 91 Longborough? Thank you, Mr. Microphone. Taylor. Oh. Your microphone. <laughs> I'll move closure and return of fees. I'll second that. Second. Seconded by Ms. Roddick. All in favor? Okay. Hey, Danny's, Danny's absent, absent for that. Uh, I don't see him there. So, okay. And the next one is 41 Radlett. I see a request. And I believe in that one. Um, so this file work was done. Yeah. The applicant is simply requesting the file be closed. Okay, and he was advised that it, they wouldn't get a refund because the work was already done. Correct. Okay, so similar motion. Motion to close the file on? Motion to close the file 41. on 41 Radlett Avenue. Thank you, Ms. Reddick. Seconded by Mr. Taylor. All in favor? Okay, the file is closed. Okay, and then I believe we have a number of uh, deferral requests. We're going to do these at the outset, Madam Secretary Treasurer, rather than wait for them to be dealt with. And in fact, the first one is item number one. Yeah, we uh, just zero want schemes. To, to make sure people aren't sitting on the phone for a long time. Item one, um, I'm not sure if we have the agent on the line, but there is a notification error that was discovered where a person who should have been notified within the 200 feet of the subject property did not receive notice, um, and that was brought to our attention, so we do have to provide notice. And um, I'm not sure if the agent has any other reasons to defer. Yeah, I see that there was also a request by planning to either defer or refuse. They felt that uh, it was premature until an OPA application was submitted on 3418 Lakeshore, I believe from my review, but in other words, this is being reviewed, deferred because of a notification issue uh, where one of the people entitled to notice did not receive notice, and perhaps in the intervening period that those issues can also be dealt with, uh, investigated to the applicant to contact city planning and uh, deal with that other issue that they raised requesting a variance. We have the agent, perhaps they can address the okay. deferral from planning. Region is Glenn Willings. Mr. Willings, you there? Hi. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, committee members. Uh, thank you for for listening to me, uh, sir. I am the planning consultant for Eden Oak, the the owner, 
And uh, also with me is Mr. Bert Arnold, who's the solicitor for Eden Oak. And we would like to proceed, Mr. Chairman, with, with the application today. And um, if that would be permitted, and uh, we're happy to follow up with those who may not have received notice, but, but we would like to proceed today. Well, sir, when there's improper notice, we're not, we, can't we can't proceed because that party uh, was entitled to notice uh, and did not receive it. Now, and I, I guess you've seen the planning uh, memo? Yes, sir. Dated September 29th. Yeah. So, you know, again, if it, they, uh, st uh, planning staff was requesting that deferral, they felt that an OPA amendment uh, would be, should be submitted. And they said, uh, failing that, their recommendation would be to refuse the application. And it's, uh, they gave some, some decision history about this, dealing with these nine parking spots. So perhaps if it has to be dealt with, you can use that time pending renotification to deal with these other issues that have come up. And I see there are a lot of people registered as speakers again. So there seems to be a lot of interest in this application. Yes, sir. Just on the planning comment, we don't share the same opinion as city planning staff uh, with respect to the need for an official plan amendment. Uh, we will not be proceeding in that way. Uh, so we would like to proceed before committee of adjustment and, and, and be heard in that vein. Uh, we believe there's a lot of merit to the application and okay, so let's and let's not get into like the merits proceed. right okay so madam secretary treasurer uh when is the earliest time that this matter is going to be rescheduled i believe there has to be i don't know if there's re-notification this party is now aware of it so it, it would how how early will this matter be able to be uh rescheduled or perhaps the agent should contact you tomorrow to discuss getting it on that the, might be better just i don't have all the information at the top of my head on availability but he can contact Annalisa Mora, who's worked on the file. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Wellings, if you can contact Annalisa Mora, the application technician on your file, uh, tomorrow uh, to discuss. But it, it's going to have to be because there is a notice issue, so it's not a question of uh, the request by community planning, but this is an issue of notification, regrettably. Well, th yeah, thank you, sir. Very disappointing, actually, and, and we've waited a long time to get to this point, and uh, the earliest we can get back, the, the better. Uh, yeah, but thank sure, you, committee. Of course. So yeah. I just see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight speak, other speakers, sorry, nine other speakers registered on this application. Are they all on the line? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, pretty much everybody is on the line, save for one person, and it even goes onto the second page. Yes, I saw. Yeah. Yeah. So I have sound checked them. Everyone is here except for Michelle Albuquerque. So I would take it, Madam Secretary Treasurer, we don't need to see hear from these people because it's an automatic procedural issue of notification rather than the committee voting on the merits of uh, you know, a normal other deferral for non-technical reasons. Yes. Okay, so we're not going to hear, but we note that these people are all online, they're listening, and they're aware of what's going on. Uh, so um, committee members can have a motion to defer for, uh, to deal with the notification issue. I'd like to make a motion for deferral in the sense that there was no, it was improper notice. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. I'll second that. Seconded by Ms. Raddick. All in favor? Okay, matter is deferred. Thank you. Okay, the next matter we're talking with, which is dealing with a deferral. Uh, and again, this is another one where there's a missing minor variance is number 1140 Dalbidi. Yeah, this is for a new detached dwelling. There are six variances. Uh, planning was rec is recommending refusal. So again, is the agent on the line? I believe the agent for this one is Robert Green. Am I wrong or, or he's not on the line? Sorry, Mr. Chair, one moment, please. I'll put Mr. Robert Green on the line. Mr. Green? Yes, thank you. Hello, Mr. Green. Uh, I guess Hi, how are you? You've been listening in. You're with uh, Lee Consulting, I see, right? No, I'm no. with CGL Architects. I'm oh, the applicant. Sorry. Okay, I'm just looking at a letter here, right? CGL yes. Architects, yes. Uh, new detached dwelling. So, um, I see yeah, I, I actually, I actually, 
I uncovered this last night, I realized that there was a variance missing on the notice. Yeah. Um, and I see there's a lot of support letters, seven support letters. There's uh, planning. You're aware of the planning memo, sir? I am. And I finally had an, op an opportunity to speak to the planner last night. Um, I understand where she's coming from. I've spoken to my client and the, the basis of her Okay, her, I don't, uh, yeah, let's. I don't want to go into the merits. I, let's. I just wanted to know if you're aware. No, of I am. The, I am aware of, of it, and we're okay. going to be getting rid of the underground okay, garage. Okay, so let's let's hear from the motivated. secretary treasurer. There, this matter has to be. There's a missing variance. I understand, which I believe the agent is the one who. Yes, is saying we he just found, found that out overnight. So um, we'll have to reschedule it to include all of the required variances. Okay. And there's nobody else on the line. No one else registered to speak on this matter. We do have seven letters of support. We have the negative planning report, so perhaps the applicant can deal with planning in the interim. I see this memo did come out uh, yes. end of September, September 25th, but you have some time to deal with it. Uh, so again, a motion to defer in order to uh, add the missing variants and recirculate. I so move. Thank you, Mr. Bolusimo. Seconded by Ms. Reddick. All in favor? Matter is deferred. Thank you. Item okay, thank you, Mr. Green. We'll see you here again. And the next one is item number 1319, Pheasant Lane. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. It's Ian Andres here from Goodman's on behalf of the applicant. Good morning, Mr. Andres. Okay, and I see again on this application, we have a lot of speakers registered. Uh, one, two, three, four, five neighbors, and I assume they're on the line as well. So, Madam Secretary Treasurer, the reason for this deferral? I see we had it have. Uh, I think in this case, there's it's twofold. One of the variances was identified incorrectly, um, and this is up to the committee whether you want to defer it for this reason. But I believe the applicant is also asking for a deferral for consultation. Variance number six, it says the maximum permitted height is 8.6 meters measured to the midpoint of the roof. It should actually be to the peak of the roof. Okay. So it's not, this actually makes it better. Okay. And then. And, the and I see there are nine letters of opposition. So perhaps uh, the applicant uh, or agent, uh, Mr. Wengel's firm can deal with these, uh, with these issues raised by the neighbors and try to. Uh, use that time constructively. Mr. Andrews? Uh, yes, sir, and, and that was stated correctly. There is a, a slight error to number six, but also we've already been in touch with some of the neighbors whose concerns have been identified through their letters. Our client is prepared to make some changes uh, to respond to some of the neighbors' concerns that were addressed. Um, so we will certainly use the time constructively and uh, we'd be grateful for a deferral uh, to the earliest possible date that we can return. And, and certainly we will come back with some changes to the application and present at that time. Yeah, well, fortunately, this application is not downtown, so uh, our agendas, you know, although there are delays, we'll I'm sure staff will do their best to get it on in its most timely uh, method as uh, possible so that your client can proceed with their new build. That would be much appreciated. Thank you. Okay, so can I have a motion, please, uh, to defer this application to correct the variance number six and as well for consultation? I'll move to, for deferral to allow changes to variant six and for consultation with the neighbors. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Seconder for that motion. Ms. Ruddick, all in favor? Okay, matter is deferred. Thank you very much. And our last, thank you, Mr. Andrews. Next application, uh, last one, which is an agent request, is number 19, uh, 253 John Street. I see planning. Um, and the councillor and uh, other neighbours are requesting a refusal. Um, can we, is the, see the applicant or the agent on this application is Mr. Maria Chair Marius. Uh, Mr. Chairman, it's actually Mr. Joseph Romero uh, representing <coughs> this application and he is on the line. Okay, so not Maria Mararos, building permit consultants, but Joseph Romero. Mr. Romero, and I see we also have, uh, the neighbor at 240 John registered, the Lynn Kula. She's on the line as well. So, Mr. Romero. Yes, sir. 
Well, this is an application oh, for a rear addition and some other additions and to convert uh, the Samuel family to a triplex or four variances. Uh, you're asking for a deferral? Yes, sir, please. And what's the purpose of the deferral? I guess to deal with the planning uh, I, I, uh, demo? I just learned uh, on Friday about uh, the information from the from the neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh, um, after that, uh, I had a, uh, I talked with the consular office. So I decided to make happy to the, to the neighbors and do yeah. some modifications yeah. in my project. Okay, so you want to make, defer in order to respond to the overwhelming, you know, we've got six letters of opposition here. Uh, you have the councillor opposed and the city planning opposed. So you want to uh, uh, defer in order to make changes to respond to this, or I see the issue is whether it's. I, 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 plan, I, plan, I plan to change the project. You're going to change the project, okay? And the yes. councillor is on the line and would like to speak to this application. Okay, let's uh, hear from the councillor. Councillor Minziata, welcome. Yes, hi. Um, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know what changes the applicant is going to make to this application because there's a number of variances and uh, even the landscaping, um, uh, there's a huge variance on that. So I don't know what sort of amendment he's going to make, but um, I know on behalf of the community and myself that we do not support the application. So unless he's I, I don't know what his plan is, but uh, definitely we are in opposition to the application. Right. So, I mean, there's so many variances. I mean, there are things that were done, um, you know, which uh, was illegal any, uh, as far as the backyard. Uh, there's no landscaping at all. And uh, the, the number of variances that he's requ uh, requiring is very um, severe in my opinion. So right. I don't know what his plan is, but I do oppose the application and so does the community. Right, so perhaps he can contact your office. I see there's massive length and depth variances from 17 yes. to 30 over 31 meters. There's a huge platform. Right. So his, this has not been built yet? This has not been built, well, this is a proposal. Well, there is a house there now. Right, but I'm just saying this, he has not proceeded with this, has not been done. This is what he was proposing to do, and so he will go back to the drawing board, I guess, and then perhaps through contacting your office to convene uh, either a community meeting or well, we're not in the, in the case of COVID now, but uh, at least to perhaps if he can communicate what he's planning to do to neighbors in advance. But he, I believe he's gotten the message, he's on the line. Uh, the agent for the applicant that uh, there's overwhelming opposition uh, to what he's come forward with, and that's why he's asking for a deferral. Yeah, and he's uh, his, the existing house now, um, he's paved the whole backyard uh, for parking, which is, uh, in, you know, uh, uh, not in keeping and which the residents were not supportive. So I don't know how he's going to correct that part of it. But anyway, if he's asking for deferral, um, that's fine. But I, I would rather the application be dealt with, but we'll go for the deferral. Yeah, and then maybe he'll make changes to make it more acceptable to the community. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, committee members on the map. And I believe we have one other party on the line as well, the neighbor. Uh, we had a neighbor on this one. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, we were unable to locate uh, Lynn the person at okay, 40 so John Street. There, there'll be re-notification in any event. So, okay. So, do I have a motion uh, for deferral of this application? Motion to defer 253 John Street. Thank you. To make changes, uh, Ms. Reddick, motion seconded by Mr. Taylor. All in favor? Matters deferred. Okay. So now we can go back and. We've now dealt with all the deferrals, just to items 1, 11, 13, and 19 have all been deferred. So if I could just tell anyone who's still on the line or connected for those items. So for Skeens Lane, Dalbeedy Avenue, Pheasant Lane, and 253 John Street, you do not have to stay on the line. Those items have been deferred and will be rescheduled for a future date. Okay, so the first item we're going to hear today is item number 210, Grass Point Crescent. This is an application to construct a second-story addition above the existing dwelling 
um, and a new front porch. I think the word and is missing. And there nope. are four variances. Um, so we have two letters of opposition, eight and 12 on both, both adjacent neighbors. And we have present on this application uh, only the agent or the owner actually, Yuri Gorbachev. It's Igor Pukovsky. We're on item two. We have Igor or as Igor the agent and Pitkovsky. Gwen, the neighbor, is present. Oh, sorry, I was on the wrong I'm on the wrong page for the attendance sheets. My mistake. Um, right, Igor Bitkovsky and of Ten Grass Point. The uh, that's the owner, and uh, we have the neighbor at number eight. And we also have a letter from number eight and a letter from number twelve. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you guys? Good, sir. Um, we have uh, on this application, we don't have any comments from city staff, but we have both adjacent neighbors with problems, with concerns. Okay. And we have one neighbor present to speak. The number, uh, so can you please tell us, uh, give us a short presentation, tell us why uh, this application uh, should be, uh, this is for a second story addition and a new front porch, so. And just to explain your variances. Uh, we, yeah, we just wanna. Uh, we have a like I have two uh, big kids. I mean, big kids. So I need a bigger space, right? And in the future, like we're planning for another uh, uh, kids, right? <laughs> yeah. Expand our family, right? Uh -huh. So and planning my my mother or my wife's mother or father to come and help us with this because with this COVID situation, right? We need kind of more help. So we need bigger house, that's for sure. So <laughs> right. Okay. So um and for the kids we need more we have like a washroom every 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 room kinda. So Okay. So that's kinda my my goal in the whole thing. Okay, so let's. Um, so I see we do have the two neighbors. I don't know if you saw. Uh, one is the 95 year old neighbor who's lived there since 1972. Um, yeah. And then the other neighbor is here with, uh, don't say what his concerns. Let's see what his concerns are. talking about the trees, loss of sunlight in one of his bedrooms and his back patio, and the issues of the trees. I don't believe, do we have any urban forestry comments on this application? I don't, we do, okay, I didn't. Okay, sir, so let's hear from uh, your neighbor um, at number eight, Gwen yep, Lassison. Let's hear from the neighbor, you'll have a chance to respond to what she has to say. Hello. 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 Um, I have a couple of um, observations here. First of the, all, can uh, we just can you just identify yourself for the record? You're Gwen Matheson. Yes, sorry. Um, yeah, Gwen Matheson, Eight Grass Point Crescent. Okay. Do you need a telephone number? No, no, that's all we need. Just let us. Just, we have your letter. Uh, just let us. Okay. Let us know what. Just highlight what your concerns are uh, about what he's looking to do. He's doing a second story addition, right? Is your house your house is a one story? Yes, it is. It's a raised bungalow. Okay. Okay, so you have so the uh, drawings are go ahead. Go ahead. Let us know what your concerns are, ma'am. Yes, the drawings that were included in the um, variance request, they um they're pretty basic. Uh they don't really accurately reflect either um, the distance of the, of the buildings or the use of the buildings. And this is important when considering the loss of light and privacy. Um, the present roof lines are less than, I think, 10 feet apart, which um, uh, will, of course, impact 
both the privacy and light, but it also impacts uh, my chimney, which is on the roof above the wall that separates our two properties. Um, adequate airflow is necessary to uh, keep the fireplace running and also uh, the, uh, meets the code requirements. I, I think the minimum there is 10 feet. So, um, so this is like a downdraft the, what, uh, argument, an argument about that the yeah. second be by making the house next to you bigger, it's going to affect the your, your operation of your wood burning, uh, your fireplace or your furnace it, or both. Ex ex exactly. Yes, and um, it um, it's too late after it's added. The one story plus the extra variance, I think, which is about nine inches. I'm not sure. Not math, much of a math, mathematician, but it it um, it is a um, a concern to me, uh, and also the um, the mature trees in the in the backyard of of the neighbor's house um, have to be considered. I think the oak is about a hundred years old, um, so those are basically. Um, my concerns, I have no idea from the plan that was submitted um, whether or not the front porch is that um, going to add uh, distance at, uh, over what is there now. Is that going to go farther forward? Um, you know, the, the plan doesn't really give me much of an idea of what is proposed. Mm -hmm. Has your neighbor uh, spoken to you about this? Did your neighbor, ma'am, did your neighbor approach you to discuss this, uh, what he plans on doing? Other than getting no, this in the I, mail. I, yeah. No, I had a brief conversation with him a couple of weeks before the letter arrived, and in that he was concerned about the acorns dropping down from the squirrels, and they, they do in, in the fall. Um, and that at that point, he mentioned that he was considering a second story but he'd had no idea when that was going to happen. So we didn't go into depth about what his plans were okay. until the letter came in. Okay, so let, let him, let's hear his response to what you've had to say dealing with the chimney or I don't know, let's see if committee members first have any questions for you uh, on, this, on, the, on what you've had to say. Uh, and the issue is the uh, probably lack of privacy and light and as well as the effect on your chimney. Uh, like a downdraft situation, Thank you. which I don't, we don't normally deal with that situation. I guess the applicant should be, uh, I don't know if Mr. Bellissimo, who's our uh, an architect who's on, on our panel, has any knowledge about that, but I have heard those issues before and perhaps you can, uh, you can deal with, uh, it's sort of more a building coat building issue than a planning issue, but I do see it's related to one of the variances. So, sir, um, Mr. Perkovsky. Yep. Okay, can you please just give us a, a response to uh, what your neighbor had to say about he wants to know if the front porch is moving any, you know, moving uh, any closer? No, the porch, the porch is going to be where it, where it is now. Okay, and what uh, about the issue could, about the, I, have you investigated the effect of, uh, or maybe you haven't, but if you have, uh, on the issue of your second story and effect on her chimney of her house, which will now be that, lower? That, that's kind of that's kind of ridiculous, like that. Doesn't going to infect her chimney at all. Okay, so perhaps and she can get some. Everybody, everybody knows that. Probably, so. Okay, so you're saying there is no effect on the chimney by having no way. Having... No way. I'm in the HVAC business. That's not going to affect at all. Okay, so and there's HVAC two business. two story houses around. Uh, next next to her, it's a two story house. Yes. And if it's any issue, then. Right, it wouldn't be. I don't think so. Sure. Yeah, I agree. In the city, there's lots of two-story houses next to one-story houses. Yeah, that doesn't. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, committee members, any questions for the applicant uh, or for uh, the neighbor next door, uh, or uh, are we ready for a motion on this application? And I believe there is an urban forestry condition. Yes, I'm just, thank you, sir. We're just waiting oh. now for the committee to uh, oh, okay, consider okay. the application yeah. and hopefully make a motion on this application. 
Yeah, yeah. Just please stand by. Yes, Mr. Chair, I find the proposal to be more than reasonable. Um, I, I note that it doesn't require any yard variances whatsoever, so the building is being built entirely within the uh, approved uh, building envelope. Um, the uh, floor space index increase I find to be minor in nature along with the, uh, the all the other variants requested. So um, I find the application meets the four tests under the Planning Act and I move approval subject to urban forestry condition number two. Okay, thank you Mr. Taylor for that motion. I have a second for Mr. Taylor. I, I second it. Thank you Mr. Bellissimo, all in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, sir. You have a, you have your motion. Uh, you have your variances. Okay. Application has been approved. Okay. Thank you. So now we'll move on to item number three, uh, eighty-three Pointer Drive. It's an application to construct a two-story front addition and include an attached garage. There are three variances. We have revised uh, pl uh, zoning review, um, and. Um, that is all we have on this application. Revised zoning review and revised plans, and we have no comments from city staff or neighbors. And registered to speak on this is Daniel Cheatley from Wren Design the, as agent. Mr. Cheatley. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chairman and Planning Committee. Okay. I, as you said, I'm Daniel Cheatley from Wren Design on behalf of the owners. Okay, nice to see a, uh, there's only three variances here. I see it's the front. Yes, well, we did have, is coming closer. We had uh, initial discussion with the planners. Uh, mm -hmm. We had originally proposed a front setback of one second here um, of six, uh, sorry, 6.1 meters, which we then discussed and we increased our setback uh, to 7.6 meters. Uh, which also reduced our, our FSI. Okay, I see that. And uh, that was in response to staff uh, concerns. So that's what we have revised yes. plans. Uh, committee members, any questions or are we ready for a motion on this? Very straightforward. I'd like to make a motion if the other members do not have any further questions. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. Motion is? I'd like to move approval. I find that the variances are minor in nature and, and this approve the, uh, the variances as presented to us in the revised plans. Okay, and is there a uh, urban forestry on this one or no? I don't have to keep track. So. I don't see any variance, any requirements for forestry. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. Motion for approval, seconded by Ms. Ruddick. All in favor, you have unanimous approval, sir. Great, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Our pleasure. Next application is item number four, 10 York Woods Gate. And we have only one registered speaker, Lance Caprillion, the uh, applicant. And this is an application um, to convert office space to six residential dwelling units. Hold on a second, computer's a little slow. Yeah, sorry, it's two residential dwelling units. I didn't, and there's two variances being the uh, amenity space, the number of dwelling units. Um, transportation has no objection and two um, conditions of approval. That's all we have. We don't have any um, comments from uh, neighbors. And we do have a planning report. Just trying to see that planning report to get it to open up. They're recommending refusing variance number two. Okay. So uh, is Mr. Caprelli in there? I am, yes. Good morning, Mr. Okay. Chairman and members of the committee. Good morning. So you want to convert this space to residential units and you have a six units more than is permitted. Uh, they, have you read the planning report? And the transportation. We, we have been, and actually, we have been in consultation back and forth with planning to try to define a, uh, a landscape improvement plan that um, that works for them. We haven't managed to get to that point, so uh, I would like 
to have a deferral if that's possible so we can have a little more time to come to an agreement with planning. Um, we're close, but um, there's just a few points that don't work uh, for planning staff at this point. We'd like to get um, their their buy into this to this project. And that's the uh, the fact that you don't have any amenity space. Yes, that is. And and so we were proposing a number of improvements, bike parking, uh, landscaping, some amenity space and garbage enclosures, but um, they're looking for a little bit more. Okay. So we uh, okay. I'd rather go back to them and get 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 alignment um, if we can do it. Yeah, OK, it's your application. So the delay is that you're, you know, at your uh, peril yes. or whatever. So if you want to work that out rather than, you know, get this application heard and either uh, get your variance to for amenity space or have that refused and then have to work it out afterwards, you'd rather deal with it uh, in advance. And I see there's also uh, transportation was had some conditions as well. I don't know if you had any objections to that, but you can use the same time. So although we don't really like doing, having defer a lot of deferrals because it kind of, you know, mucks up the works and the processing and uh, dispensing of applications. Uh, I guess there's some merit here. So committee members, the applicant is asking for a deferral to deal with community planning. I, I would like to move a deferral of the application on the basis that the applicant will have a chance to revise and discuss the submission with uh, city staff planning and transportation services. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. Motion to defer. Um, Second for that motion. I was absent. I'll abstain. I was wasn't. Oh, okay. Which is okay. Second by Mr. Taylor. All in favor? Okay. And Ms. Roddick abstains because she was had left the room for the discussion. Um, okay. So the matter is deferred. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Item number five then is 14 Marquee Avenue. And we have um, we have a number of speakers registered on this. We have the applicant or the agent, uh, Murray Fern. Uh, we have the neighbors at 14, 12, 6, and 20 marquee registered. And this is an application uh, for a detached dwelling with an attached garage with six variances. For opposition, planning is recommending refusal of the application. Um, The applicant, I have a note here, the applicant wishes to proceed. Um, they're willing to make some changes to certain aspects, but they don't want to delay, so they want to proceed with the application. Okay, so um, the applicant is aware of the planning memo. Uh, I assume all the neighbors are uh, as well. I'm trying to get this. So, Mr. Fern, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, um, if I can, uh, uh, good morning, committee members. Uh, my name is Murray Fern. I'm representing, I'm the applicant agent representing the owners of uh, 14 Marquee Avenue. Um, the owners purchased this property in May of this year. They're a family who desire to live in the neighborhood. They're not builders or developers. Okay. Um, hello? Yes, go ahead. So you want your proceeding. On? So let's, yeah, you're in your five minutes. So let's tell us why this application is worthy of support, notwithstanding the, the uh, you know, the number of uh, people here in opposition, uh, all the adjacent neighbors. Um, as well as the planning opinion that the variances uh, are not in keeping with the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw and doesn't respect and reinforce the character of the neighborhood. You uh, advised you wish to proceed. I see you have quite a high uh, uh, floor space index of 0.92. I don't know if that is, you know, if there are other examples in the area on the street of floor space indexes and. Uh, a point nine two and uh, lot coverage is a point three five. You also have well, a that's, large, that's a large rear, pl rear platform of uh, almost fifteen meters, where four meters is permitted. So just tell us why this should be uh, approved, uh, since you wish to proceed and not make changes. We also have forest well, requirements and transportation. Transportation it, is fine with it. Yeah. 
So why, uh, you know, why, uh, you know, please, it's your, your uh, it's your time to let the committee know why this should be approved, uh, and then we're going to hear from the neighbors, and you'll have a chance to respond. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll just carry on here if I could. Um, our application has six var six variances before the committee today. Um, we received an email from from Tristan. James, who is the planner assigned to our application on September the 3rd, 2020. Um, this email indicated that the planning department had concerns with, with three of the six variances. Um, variance number two, um, maximum gross floor area, or FSI. Uh, variance number three, minimum side yard setback. And variance number five, uh, area of a platform above the second floor. Um, at that Time, the planner asked us if we could redesign and make changes by September the 9th of 2020. And again, we had been working on this for, for months, and there was no way that we could redesign and revise our drawings in that, in that short of a time period. But since then, um, the owners have, have spoken to some of their neighbors who have concerns with the project. And um, at this point, if the committee would, adjustment members would allow us um, we'd like to make some changes, as indicated, uh, to our application. You can't make changes here today, Mr. Fern. You know that. We have 35 applications, and we don't have time for changes to be made, uh, which would require new plans and new drawings and everything on the fly. So in that case, if you're willing to make changes, you should be deferring and making those changes and recirculating them and dealing with them in that matter. But we will not entertain... Uh, you know, anything, uh, unless it's a minor couple of inches here or there, we're not entertaining changes to the, to the uh, variances today. What? Well, in that, then I think we have no other do option. You have, do you have plans? Do you have plans to go along with those changes you're proposing to tell us about? Well, um, it, to be honest, I don't think, like, we would need a, a plan to show what we're proposing. I can explain, and, and there's exact numbers to refer to our changes, um, but again, if, if there's going to be complications, um, could we um, ask for a deferral? I know things were clogging up the system, but uh, yeah. we we have our arborist uh, trying to do a, an arborist report, right. and um, um, Yeah, I, I saw a note here that said you're willing to make changes, but you wanted to proceed because, uh, you know, time is time is a running. So at the time, I believe it was in the planning memo that indicated that you were prepared to make changes. Uh, yeah, planning staff has discussed their concerns with the applicant, requested the proposal be revised to be more in keeping. The applicant advised staff that though they are willing to revise certain aspects, they are not willing to delay the progress of the project to make the revisions. As such, the applicant has chosen to have the application considered as currently proposed. So that doesn't mean coming here, and I assume you're going to maybe reduce the 0.92 FSI. I don't know if that was one of the things that you were seeking to change, but you don't have plans if you were going to cut that down. Whose phone is going off? Well, sorry, that's my phone. That's, that's my phone. I apologize. My other line. So, so we propose to reduce that um, that GFA or SFI to 0.88. Anyway. Percent. Yeah. Well, that that's that's not what your plans show, Madam Secretary Treasurer. What as simple as that? If that was the only change that he was looking to take, which is not much of a change, but. Uh, well, no, that. The only one, sir. If I could, I see. if I can just, no. um, we were willing to cut back as per the um, as per the uh, planning department with regards to the uh, second floor uh, balcony. We were planning to cut that back to their requirement of 10, 10 meters squared. They and hold on. It's it's four meters squared. Are you saying that they were? This is something pursuant to a conversation because the variance is from four meters to 14.36, you're saying you're willing to take it down to 10 meters, but that's still a mm -hmm. two and a half times larger than permitted. But you're saying that's what, and again, yeah, the plan, planning to... your plans don't reflect that. Yeah. Madam Secretary, well, do you think this should be deferred? Yeah. 
Yes, the neighbors haven't had a chance to review yeah. any revisions. I don't believe the applicant has plans and the committee doesn't have right. the plans to see what the impact of those changes would be. Right. And again, we don't know. Uh, and again, there's whether it would be approved or not approved by the plans, but you point, taking the 0.92 uh, FSI down to 0.88, where it's 0.5 permitted, isn't much of a reduction. Um, but in any event, I think since you don't have plans, and we're, as I read before and stated, you wanted to proceed, but now you say you're willing to make changes, so it looks like you're going to have to defer. Do we have to, and you're, you're asking for that, so do we have to hear then from the neighbors who've come on the line today to deal with this on the matter of deferral? On the one hand, you're going to Mr. Fern is committed to making this application, you know, closer to compliance than is currently existing. So I assume they won't be, uh, they will be, would be re-notified. So Madam Secretary, should we weigh in and get them all in the line and get their opinion on the deferral request? Uh, it's up to the committee as perhaps the applicant can consult with the concerned neighbors. Okay, I see. Well, why don't we speak to uh, the neighbor right next door at number 12 because I see we have uh, the neighbor at number 12, 6, and 20. They're the closest. Julie Ambakshir. Hi. Yep, I'm here. Hi. Have you been following I see, uh, Mr. Fern's, uh, our discussion with Mr. Fern? I have been following it, yes. Okay, so he looks like he's now asking to defer to make some changes because we're not permitting him to make those changes on the fly here today. He's indicated a very small change to the... FSI from 0.92 to 0.88 and to change to cut down the size of the rear platform from almost 15 meters to 10 meters. But he's now saying he'd like to defer to make those changes and there would be recirculation to you and the other neighbors. Is that acceptable to you? Yeah, I think um, I'd be, you know, I'd like to see what the new plans are. I, I do feel, as you feel, that the, the new proposed FSI is still fairly large um, sure. and not really in keeping with the streets um, feel. Uh, but, yes, I, I'd be okay. open to seeing Yeah, so this plans. way, let him make his, he'll make his changes. You'll get, you and the other neighbors will get, uh, will be re-notified, and then we can go from there. And if it's still unacceptable, you'll have a chance to appear just like you're appearing today or maybe in person at some point in the future. I don't know though when that's going to be. So it's really no uh, hardship because uh, you will be have a chance to respond to the revisions. So you're okay with that? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think, that. I don't know if you can speak to your neighbors. We're not uh, number six and number 20 who are also on the line. Perhaps we can get just get there, uh, get them to introduce themselves since they've registered. William Armitage at number six, Marquee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, committee members. Um, I obviously echo the comments of city planning. The home is certainly not in keeping with the street. Uh, it's a small street with 17 dwellings, 13 of which have already been redeveloped, um, most of which in my time okay. here. Yeah, so just um, on the issue and, of the deferral. Uh, yeah, I'm happy with the issue of deferral. I would just correct the applicant's solicitor or agent who said it was a second story balcony, but it's actually a third story balcony if I understand the plans correctly. Okay. Which is even more troubling for us. Uh, of course. Um, so, yeah, okay. So, we're going to uh, just stay on the line. The matter will likely be deferred, and you'll be re notified and have a chance to comment and deal with the new uh, application, revised application. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And now, Mr. Patterson at number 20. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Patterson was on WebEx, but I don't see him anymore. Okay. That's that's no problem. Okay, so let's have a, can we have a, a motion on the issue of deferral? I'd like to move a deferral of the application based on the opportunity to give the applicant to revise a drawing and to consult with the neighbors. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. All in favor? Uh, I second that motion. Second, Ms. Ruddick. All in favor? Okay, the matter's been deferred. Thank you, Mr. Fern. We'll see you here again. Or we'll hear Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number six is 23 Smithfield Drive. And we have Register Stefano Sarantino, the owner. Hi there, yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Um, this is an application to construct a two-story rear addition, a new covered front porch, and a new rear deck. 
and there are um, um, six variances. And we have no comments yes. from anyone, not from neighbors or from city staff. Right. So unless yes. there's any... Um, actually... Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Yes. Um, so I'm actually um, requesting a, a deferral for this meeting. Um, we're wanting, we want to make changes to the drawings and this may require a new zoning notice. Uh, okay. We're, we're, we're just letting everyone we're know who's asking. We're more items than we're hearing here today. Any deferrals will not be heard this year and we do not have dates for next year. So just, I'm letting people know so that they don't complain afterwards. Sir, you hear that? If you, you yes, you know, you're, um, you're going to make changes, and like this, is, <laughs> no one at all has has issued any concerns with what you're proposing. Maybe that's indicating maybe you should go for more. Um, you have a very modest floor space index, um, but if you'd like to make changes, yes. and you know you paid an application fee, um, kind of late in the day to ask to have it held back. But the matter is, uh, you know, we get the city gets many, many, many applications, we try to sort of clear them when they sort of get deferred, as a lot of them are today. It sort of uh, doesn't clear our uh, our backlog. I I fully understand this no, was yes. not our... Okay, so you're just, you want to make some changes and then you're going to increase, you're going to change the variances. So, madam, uh, so committee members, do you have any objection uh, uh, to the deferral it, of this it, matter so he can make changes and recirculate the application? What, you know, what is this? I guess you filed your application. I'm not sure if you did this prior to COVID or, or not, or when you made this application, you, your, your client, is this you or your I, client? you're the owner, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look, I, I apologize, everyone. This, this was not the plan. Um, it, it, unfortunately, be, it's not to, to make anything bigger, actually. Um, there's just been a miscommunication and impasse. I, I, we just genuinely, the design you know my wife and i want to make is if this isn't it and and we are don't want to be in this situation either we really wanted to move yeah forward. no i understand you don't want to get something approved I, that you, I don't know, you don't want to go ahead with so um committee members uh just motion for deferral mr taylor can, can i just ask ask a question uh sir you just stated that sure. it is not your intent to increase any of the variances no we can't if that's the case why wouldn't you proceed with what is before us you can always it, you can always build something less than you get approval for. I it it, it I don't know. I, I don't know what my next design. Will, I don't want to commit to that 100 percent, 99 percent. I don't think it's going to get bigger, but I, I just can't fully commit to that. Um, it, it, it's it's not about the size, though. Okay, and perhaps the description may change of what you're going to do. Like right now, it's a two-story yeah, and a covered porch may have been. And we're, if, if the purpose yes. changes, then I guess you won't. Yes. Okay. So I, are you still, I see that you had, uh, you had Mr. Cunha, Ian Cunha. It was design consultants acting for you. So they helped you make this plan. I don't know if you're going back to them. We're going to hire another agent, another design consultant. But uh, I assume you want to revisit <laughs> this. So... Did we, are we in the middle of a motion or, or Mr. Taylor? Yes, I'd like to make a motion. Yes, Danny. I'd like to make a motion for deferral as the applicant would like to revise his proposal. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bolissimo. Seconded Second. by Ms. Reddick. All in favor? Okay, the matter is deferred. Maybe not. Thank you, everyone. Here. We'll see you back here another time. Good. Perhaps in the new year. Thank you. Okay, our next application is item number seven, 169 Betta Street. It's an application to construct uh, a new um, two-story, sorry. Let me just pull this up. Apologies. Number seven, one sixty nine Betta Street, and, and it's to new detached dwelling with an attached garage. There's six variances. Um, we have a letter opposed uh, of opposition issue with the side entrance and with the survey. Uh, we have 
registered to speak on this application, uh, the agent, uh, Tomas Goral, and uh, the neighbor at 171 Beda Street who wrote the letter. Good morning, sir. Good morning, uh, committee and uh, committee members. My name is Tomas Goral. I'm here to represent the homeowner at 169 Beda. Yeah, okay, you're aware there's yeah. transportation conditions of approval. We have copy of site specific zoning bylaw for this site. We have letter of opposition. No other comments from uh, city staff. I'm not seeing. Is there a urban forestry on this? Urban forestry has a condition as well. So, sir, um, have you spoken? To, have you seen the neighbor's letter? Yes, I have seen the neighbor's so letter. That's the only opposition we have um, to this. If you'd like to respond. And the, the party who wrote the letter is uh, with us on the line as well. Shall I respond first or? Well, if, yeah, unless speak? you'd like to tell us something, then let's her have her speak and then you can respond. So you might as well read. I mean, I, I, read, the, I read the letter. I don't uh, see any variance, variances that discuss anything in that letter that discusses the variances. The main ob objection was the side entrance. Mm -hmm. However, that, in my opinion, is a little unfair because she has a side entrance at that area as well. Mm -hmm. And then in regards to the survey, I did uh, send a survey that was uh, done in 1979 showing that the setbacks and everything that we have is correct. And that's where we got the information. So I can't speak on her survey and the survey that she used. I do know that individual. I don't know how that happened. I mean, it's only two inches difference, but I did send an old one from 1979 and Ours was pretty much exactly like that. So I guess we'll see what she says in regards to that. Right. Okay. Uh, Ms. Kowalska. Is Ms. Kowalska there? Yes, yes, I'm here. Okay, Ms. Kowalska, welcome. We have your letter dated September 28th. And the applicant has your letter dated September 28th. And can you please... Uh, just sort of outline what your concerns are. We know about the side entrance, which he's saying it's not fair that he, you have one. He'd like to have one there as well. And he's uh, mentioning the issue with the survey, which is sort of, uh, sort of a legal issue between the two of you, potentially. Yes, that's true. Yes, that is correct. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not sure what the gentleman meant by sending a survey from 79 if sent it to me. I have not received that yet. Um, I have forwarded the survey um, done by Mr. Walchuk um, to the uh, surveyors that did my survey uh, because there is a discrepancy um, in terms of width from, uh, from the lot line, um, which renders all the other measurements in the variances very different. Um, so, so it, it is, it is important. Um, in terms of the side entrance, um, it is directly in front of our side entrance, um, which would impact privacy significantly. Um, in addition, the proposed platform um, would alter our usable space to access the vehicle, to be able to exit the vehicle, enter vehicle, unload groceries. In terms of uh, my health, my physical health, my parents' physical health and age, that is an, a major issue for us, in addition to the privacy, as well as the entrance being um, set back further um, which positions it right in our side window. Okay. Any uh, any questions? And, or, yeah. Um I I'm sorry, I just, just wanted to make a comment. I, I heard I heard you say that um, uh, there if there was a anything from planning there there is a note on file from forestry yes okay not city planning but from forestry forestry yes right okay 
Okay, so anyone have any questions for uh, Ms. Kowalska at 171? Okay, so let's hear from the uh, agent and uh, in response to uh, what she's had to say, which she's already touched upon in any case. Yeah. Okay, um, the survey that I was referring to from 1979, I sent it into the city. So it's on online uh, website, but as you mentioned, I guess that is a more of a legal issue, which we can uh, look into. Um, yeah. In regards to the maneuvering on the on the driveway, uh, that really does. I don't know if that affects or doesn't affect her, but we're putting a fence on the property line afterwards anyway. So the platform will be in, on our property, and whether the platform is there or isn't there, and we put the fence up, her potential argument of maneuvering is still going to be an issue when we put the fence up, which I don't feel is something of us to address. It's more how she uses her space and she has to be able to, within her boundary and her property, maneuver however suits her best. And again, going back to the door, I just, it's you can't say it's okay for me, but not okay for someone else. That's just unfair. Committee members, any questions for uh, either the applicant or the neighbor with respect to those issues, or are we ready for a motion? And we have, I think, transportation has said there, from a transportation perspective, there's no issues, I believe. Um, no, there are. Conditions. conditions. There's conditions. Sir, you're aware of the uh, transportation conditions. There have no yes. objection, but they have three conditions. Correct, yes. Site plan, yeah. Okay. Uh, and there is uh, urban forestry. Yes, we have to plant the tree. Yeah. Is there any, uh, so is anyone ready to make a motion on this application? Yes, Mr. Chair, I feel that the survey discrepancy issue is something that uh, could could be pursued outside of our uh, jurisdiction. We certainly don't have any jurisdiction over that or an ability to deal with it or correct it. Uh, so setting that aside for whatever process either the applicant or neighbor decide to uh, enjoin in, um, I find the variances to be minor in nature in keeping with all four tests under the Planning Act. And I move for approval subject to urban forestry condition number three and the transportation department conditions. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Do you have a seconder for Mr. Taylor's motion? Ms. Reddick, all in favor? Okay, the matter, the motion is approved. Is uh, the motion carries, the application is approved. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Morale. Good Thank day. Ms. Kowalska. Okay, our next item is item number uh, eight, uh, 1155 Albion Road. And this is an application for a new, to construct a new senior citizens building. There are six variances. Uh, huh. uh, we have, there are six variances. There's a supporting material. There's a site specific zoning bylaw. We have comments from urban forestry, engineering, ravines, transportation. Uh, we have concerns, um, a letter of concern. And we have um, planning and recommending deferral or refusal of the application. Registered speakers on this are John Romanov, the agent, and uh, Mr. Ahmad, the owner of the property. There's no one here, uh, no neighbors uh, registered to speak. Mr. Romanov. Yes, I'm here, Mr. Chair. Okay, I see so, we have site specific zoning bylaw, supporting material, a shadow study, uh, another support, supporting material being uh, engineering submissions, and uh, everything else I had to say, including, I guess, most importantly, the planning memo. Mr. Yes, yeah, so. Planning memo. Yeah, so I. What I would uh, put forward to the committee is that um, the, the process that we were looking at doing was an amendment to the existing site plan approval. So the idea of the new building is to continue with the same footprint of the building, the same landscaping, same grading. So none of the site 
specific uh, relationships are being altered. The only thing that we're looking at is adding one more floor to the building. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate planning's comment about uh, going through for the amendment and that they would like to review the uh, material. Um, we're open to deferral. We wouldn't want to have this um, application refused out of hand. Um, however, if the committee would prefer me to move forward, I can move forward on the merits of the of the. Uh, okay, let's just take a look. So we're looking I, for. See, I see we also have a neighbor weighing in there saying they don't understand how you're asking for more units and less parking. Uh, but so I see you're looking to go from 1.7 times coverage to 2.0 times six. You're looking in one more floor. So they are recommend. They're saying either defer or refuse. Again, this is a As major, major prepared situation. To... So they're saying that um, they've met with you April 30th, expressing the concerns, advice, site prime control amendment application be submitted, and, um, and circulated prior yeah. to seeking approvals through committee. So they're saying now that uh, it should be deferred on that basis to submit a site plan control application review, which I guess you sought not to do that and instead to proceed beforehand um well i would i would uh, respectfully say to committee that it was we were not aware of of uh, planning's um uh requirement on that basis when we originally met with them um it was uh we were we were in fact taken aback by the letter that planning issued but yeah so back in we, april we you're saying yeah you met with them in april correct well we actually met with them six months prior uh -huh. And uh, planning, planning had directed us to get um, a review of PPR, which we did to uh, make sure that there were no other variances than we presented at that meeting six months prior. Mm -hmm. uh, and after that meeting, they directed us that we should proceed with committee of adjustment. Okay. Um, there's a new planner on the file that we met uh, just last month. And, and so the planning position has changed slightly. Yeah. Uh, again, we have no problem to defer at this point in time. If the committee um, suggests that that would be the appropriate method, we, we would certainly seek for deferral at this moment rather than a refusal. For sure. Okay. So the, because of the site plan control application, they wanted, uh, you know, because you're going for one extra floor, 19 more units, rather than going as, you know, they, I guess they want you, they're saying it's okay to proceed that way for a minor variance for that change but they want to see the site plan control application. Committee members uh, say agree with that. So let's just, uh, on the issue of the deferral. Um... I'd like to make a motion. Yes. Motion for deferral on the basis that planning is asking for site plan control application, which is in my mind, a very major issue. And I would like to defer this as the applicant also is agreeing to this. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. Seconded by Ms. Ruddick. All in favor? Okay, the matter is deferred. Thank you. Another deferral today. Thank you. <laughs> Item number nine is uh, 15 Valiant Road. It's a second story addition above the existing dwelling. There are two variances. There's a cover letter and support, nothing else, no comments or uh, conditions from city staff or uh, no concerns from area residents. We have speaker Ben Baghdadi. Uh, the agent, Mr. Baghdadi. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, members of the committee. This is um, Bamdad or Ben Baghdadi from BBA Design Studio. I'm the architect and agent for this property. Okay, welcome. I don't believe we need a presentation, sir. We have a very straightforward application, uh, just the top up. Um, no concerns, no conditions from city departments, no concerns from neighbors. We just have your covering letter. So, committee members, any questions for Mr. Baghdadi or are you ready for a motion? I believe there's a forestry condition on this one, is there? Forestry? Yep. Okay, sorry. Forestry. I didn't make note of the forestry conditions today in my agenda, so I have to rely on you, uh, you for that. And there is no note even in my briefing on the... Anyway, I guess we do have the condition. Sir, you're aware of the, trans the uh, urban forestry condition? Yes, I spoke with the planner. We have an arborist involved, and the report has been made already. Okay. So, uh, Can I make a motion for approval on the condition of forestries? Um, finally, the variances are minor in nature. Thank you, Mr. Melissa. 
Seconded by Ms. Ruddick. All in favor? Okay, the motion is approved. Application is granted. Variances, you have your variances, sir. Thank you very much, committee. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay. Item number 10, 2582 Keel Street. Uh, this is an application um, for second story rear addition. There are three variances. We have a copy of a previous uh, Committee of Adjustment uh, decision in 2017 regarding the rear uh, garage, and we have no other comments from uh, city staff, city departments, or area neighbors. Mr. Shbadi, Arbin Shbadi, the yes. agent on this matter. Welcome, sir. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Arbin Shbadi. I'm the agent for the owner. Okay. Uh, we have, um, there's nothing on file. I don't think we need a presentation from you, sir. Let's just see if <laughs> committee members have any questions or if someone's ready to make a decision on this. Okay. Committee members. Uh, any questions for the agent, or are we ready for a motion? I'm not sure. Is there? I don't. Is there any urban forestry uh, on this one? I don't see it listed in the in the bookmarks. Okay, so we just have the three variances for the second story edition. Mr. Chair, I find the variances to be minor in nature and uh, meeting all the other tests under the Planning Act, and I recommend approval without conditions. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Seconder for that. Ms. Reddick, all in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you, sir. Mr. Schmuddy, you have your approval? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, item number 11 has been deferred. So we'll move down to item number 12, 16 Park Lane. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. My name is Yuri Gorbachev, and I'm the owner of 16 Park Lane. Okay, just hang on for one second, sir. Uh, I don't believe we have anyone else registered on this matter. Hold on, just we have the note. We have a previous decision. We have uh, comments from Ravines and TRCA. Um, basically, this is to legalize the existing dwelling with an attached garage. I believe all we have before us, other than what was previously deferred, is a a height variance where of 6.5 to 6.64 that is correct yeah okay, so what happened uh how did that happen sir i guess it was some measurement issue or uh it, it could be a measurement issue uh, our builders inadvertently exceeded by 14 centimeters and we're not quite sure what happened yeah. um after after construction we had an as-built survey uh done and uh, they indicated that it was six point uh, six four awesome. meters. So we, yeah. um, um, I, I'm not sure how you know how that happened. It was, you know, inadvertently we're two percent over. So uh, the recommendation was just go through the process of the committee of adjustments and just legalize the uh, right the I uh, the. I don't think we're going to make you tear it down. <laughs> so <laughs> Thank rather, you. Much. Rather minor, uh, minor ad. So I don't see uh, ravines and TRCA Ray weighed in on this. I guess do they have any issues with that? Okay. Okay. So let's hear from uh, any committee members. Uh, just basically looking for a motion of approval. Like to uh, make a motion for approval. The, the variance is very minor in nature. Thank you, Mr. Bellissimo, and uh, seconded by Mr. Taylor. Okay. I. Ms. Roddick marked absent for this matter, this item. She's left the room. Okay, you have unanimous approval, sir. Thank you so much. Good. Have a good evening. Evening, afternoon, morning. <laughs> It'll all be great. Okay, item 13 has been deferred, so we move down to item number 14. So, Mr. Chairman, for item number 14, uh, William Hampton will not be presenting. It'll be Sandra Bower, who's the owner of the property. Okay, so all we had registered was the owner and the agent. Uh, we don't have no one else registered here to speak. This is um, an application for a, uh, let's just put it up here. Right, uh, attached garage on the south side of the existing dwelling. There are two variances, very minor, length and depth. Um, we have no comments from city staff or area neighbors. 
Ms. Bauer, welcome. Is Ms. Bauer there? Did I get the name wrong? Mr. Chairman. Yes, I am. Okay. Oh, okay. No, yeah, it's Bauer. Welcome. Welcome. Very straightforward application. Thanks. Uh, this your attached garage is just a yep. little too long, a little too deep. Um, yeah. And no one else. No one else. I'm restricted in terms of where I can start it. Okay. Committee members, any questions for the uh, homeowner, or are we ready for a motion? And is there any? I don't see any urban forestry on this. No. Okay. Mr. Chair, I find the variances to be uh, in keeping with the four tests under the Planning Act, and I move for approval without conditions. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Seconder for that. Ms. Reddick, all in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you. Okay, we're done. Item number 15. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number 15, then, is 85 Halliburton Avenue. And this is an application. Good morning, Mr. Oh, sorry. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and committee members. Good. My name That's... is Mark Permiani, and I'm representing the homeowners of 85 Halliburton Avenue, Connie and Carlo Lucia. Thank you. And we have also present 83 Halliburton, Giancarlo DiZazzo. Um, This is an application for a uh, new detached dwelling with an attached garage. There are four variances. And um, we have an Arbor's report. Um, we have four letters of opposition from 89, 86, 88, and 85 Halliburton. Um, planning is asking, has written in and asking that, or suggesting to committee that variance number three be reduced to 18 meters. That's the uh, length variances. Hold on. 18 meters. I have it as 17. 0.37. Oh, and the second floor length of 19.15. So they want the second floor length cut down from 19.8, 19.15 to 18. So, sir, I, we'd like you to comment on that request from community planning, and then we'll hear from the neighbor. Okay. Um, the staff has recommended that the proposed building length be reduced to 18 meters from 19.15 meters. We feel strongly that this is only a 20% floating portion of the main rear building face, which is only 17.37 meters. It is important to note that this projection is only occurring at a small portion of the second floor and is an integral part of our design for the, for the homeowner's growing family. And also feel strongly that the impact is minor in nature. Um, you could refer to this on drawing COA 10 from our submission package where it clearly demonstrates that. Um, we've also pulled back the so, rear. Sorry, well, can you tell us book. what drawing, just before you go on, can we look at that drawing? Because if that's absolutely if that's what you say and, and committee members are inclined to approve that on the basis that only it only covers, as you say, a small portion, they would perhaps make yep. a condition that it be tied to that plan so to make sure you don't do that across the entire that you you comply with that and it would only be on that area right the uh yeah. length on that so which drawing is that coa 10. okay getting it up on the board here does everyone uh let me just get that plan co8 So can you direct so, us to the portion? Yeah. So if you look at the perspective, if you could just pan up a little bit. No, sorry, down, down, I apologize. Okay. So as you can see, it's a very small portion that we've pulled out on the second floor. And what we've done to offset that is we pulled back the rear building face below substantially to offset that impact. Uh -huh. And, and we really feel strongly that it is in minor in nature by by providing that offset. Okay. You know, also we we did a recent site visit. And we observed a new build at Eleven Random Street, where the building length I don't know exactly what it was, but I faced it off at it, it must exceed nineteen meters. Um, and but we feel that we are in line with all of the developments that are occurring in the community and we feel this is a real small projection 
based on the percentage of the rear building face. Right. And right. we have we have total support from our neighbors, direct neighbors at 83 and 87 Halliburton with no objection. And um, we feel it's an integral part of our design. Okay, so I see here like um, in the planning report, they just mentioned that they've done an analysis and found no decisions approving a building length of similar size. So they didn't seem to consider the fact that, as you're stating, it's only a smaller portion um, that is at the 19.15. So what is the what does the rest of it jog back to? Does it come so to 18 the, meters that they're looking for? So the 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 17.37 meters would be the main building phase. Okay, they're not going to which is slightly slightly over the required 17 meters, and then the pulled back portion is approximately um, 15.5 meters. So. Okay, so I just see that 17.37 is what it is on the ground floor, and the second floor, it just jogs out to that. You're right. That the, so the main okay. projection on the ground, on the, the furthest portion of the rear wall is 17.37, but where the kitchen site is, or the, underneath that, that, the overhang on the second floor, we pulled that back substantially to offset the 19.15 above. Okay. And my next question for you, uh, Mr. Preminari, is whether you or your client spoke to the neighbor, because it looks like, I guess you're saying that you have the adjacent neighbors on side at 87 and 83, but it looks yes. like neighbors at 89, 86, 88, and 85 have concerns. So we'll hear, we're going to hear from them and you'll have a chance to respond. Yeah, I'll gladly listen and respond. Okay, sir. Okay, so... Uh, first of all, before we do that, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Permiani? Okay, so uh, let's hear from uh, the first neighbor registered. We have, I guess, the only red the only one we have. We have the three let the four letters, but we only have one of those four people. Um, actually, I'm wrong. It's not the the party registered to speak, Mr. Dezazo is from 83, who you said is in support, so maybe we'll hear if he has indeed in support or if he has any concerns. Is uh, Giancarlo DeZazzo there, please? I am. Uh, so, I only have a couple of concerns that I did voice with the owner, and I think we've dealt with them uh, privately. One is regard to the cedars that are proposed to be cut down on the uh, on, on 83 side of the property. Uh, yeah, I see we have an arborist report on this matter. So you're saying all your concerns have been resolved privately with the uh, with your neighbor? That's correct. Okay, so as I see that the, the app, Mr. Primirani said that both Jason neighbors were sort of on side and the concerns come from other neighbors. Uh, so you're, you're just confirming that all of your concerns have been addressed directly uh, and that you're fine with the application. Confirm and support, yes. Okay. So there's not anything else you'd like to add, or we'll, uh, we can go back to, to the uh, agent? No, oh, that's it. Thank you. Okay. So committee members, uh, I guess we don't need Mr. Uh, the agent to respond to that. We do have the four letters of opposition, and we do have uh, the neighbor at 83 confirming he's on side. The neighbor at 87 has not weighed in, and we've been told he's on side. So there's concerns which you've read from uh, in the letters of the other neighbors. And uh, based on that, I'm just asking if you have any further questions for the applicant or if someone's ready to make a motion. Mr. Chair, I find the variances to meet the four tests under the Planning Act, and I recommend approval subject to urban forestry conditions one and two. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Seconder for that motion. Ms. Reddick or Mr. Bellissimo? Ms. Mr. Taylor I'll made a motion. motion. Second that motion. Thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. All in favor? Opposed? So you're opposed? You're in favor? You're opposed. Not opposed. Yeah. Okay, so the motion carries three to one. 
the application is approved. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, item number 16, 39 Cynthia Road. We have, this is an application to construct a second story addition above the existing dwelling. There are, there were five variances. There's now four, and that's why we have a revised application and revised plans, because that variance uh, for front line yard landscaping has been eliminated. So we have the revised notice. Uh, we have the materials submitted. We have 16 letters of support, form letters of support, and that's all we have. Um, Again, I don't know whether we have an urban forestry condition on this or not. Yeah, there is. Okay, so we have an urban forestry condition. Um, Martin Sabzuni is the agent. Sir, are you with us? Mr. Sabzuni? Good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, I am Martin Sabzuni. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. The stream is interrupting a bit. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you very well. Okay, my name is Martin Sabzuni. I am the agent for the 39 Cynthia Road. Thank you. Okay. Um, very simple application. Uh, you have four variances. One has been eliminated. You have done your homework. You have 16 letters of support and no other communication other than urban forest. You're aware of the urban forestry condition? Yes. Okay. So let's see if committee members have any questions for you or, uh, if someone's ready to make a motion. I'm prepared to make a motion on this matter to approve the variance requested. I find that they are minor nature and consistent with the um, four test principles that are set out in the required Interstitial Plan Planning Act, subject to the conditions from urban forestry. Okay, thank you, Ms. Reddick. Uh, we have a, a seconder for Ms. Reddick's motion. Mr. I second it. Oh, Mr. Taylor beat you, Danny. <laughs> Get you next time. All in favor? Unanimous approval. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Sunsuni. Thank you. Okay, our next application is item number 1784 Cayuga Avenue. Uh, this is an application for a new basement walkout and construct south and east side uh, additions to the existing detached garage. There are um, eight variances on this application. Uh, we have uh, supporting material and plans, covering letter, uh, the overhead context. We have site photos and um, planning is recommending refusal of variances uh, one and two. And condition of approval. There's a lot of interference. Is someone shuffling papers or? Okay. We have, uh, as I said, planning is recommending refusal uh, TRCA has no objections, but advises that a permit is still required. And um, we do not have anyone. And we all, yeah, we see, received a package later after the, the, the cutoff. Uh, we received an email from staff with pictures uh, uh, showing the walkout situation uh, from the neighbor perspective. And we have uh, only one speaker, the agent, Monica Kuhn. Ms. Kuhn, are you with us? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Great. Um, so you, you've seen the planning memo and you're aware of the other conditions? Yes. Yes, we've been in contact with planning since the beginning. Okay. So they're concerned with the front basement walkout at the front. They want that eliminated and the alteration to the front wall to accommodate the secondary suite. Right. Can I uh, give a, an explanation of what we're yes, trying to do here? Of course. Okay. You have five minutes. Great. Okay. So the first few variances have to do with the front walkout. Uh, we're planning to convert the basement to uh, a second suite. And we've gone through uh, various machinations and design options to try to see if we can um, move the entrance for the basement suite, but it's really, there's not really much option for us. The existing stairwell is too narrow to subdivide and fire rate. Um, and the right hand side, the west side, there's a driveway, so we can't put a walk out there. On the other side, we could squeeze one potentially in between the, the house and the fence, 
and we don't want to put one in the back because that would be the, the space that's uh, for the owners who are going to be living upstairs. So we did walk around the neighborhood and there are we have a package there that you uh, received on um, that was the one that was faulty the app when it was sent in uh, it was merged with um, the design images for walkouts but on the 23rd there's a, the uh, package of images of um, pro uh, properties well that's the design one um, but if you go to the other one uh, there's another package that shows neighborhood precedent. So we, even within like five blocks, we found 29 uh, instances where there are front yard walkouts to basements. Whether there are apartments there or not, we don't know, but they're there. So uh, the other, the other thing that we wanted to talk about was that uh, planning. <laughs> some of their reasons are quite strange. Um, they were saying that they think it's unsafe and there's an issue of maintenance. Um, so I, I had asked them about that and they couldn't really give me a straight answer. Um, so anyway, we, we brought forth uh, uh, the image file with all of the design options uh, of, you know, uh, examples of walkouts, front walkouts that look just fine in my opinion. Mm. Um, so if that's the second, uh, the second uh, package of images there. Okay, is that so the one? sorry, sorry, just for a second, Ms. Coon. That was the package sure. we received from yes. Adam in yeah. the mail after we got our package, correct? Now, That's I do, right. it's funny, yeah. planning doesn't always do this, but I guess you'll see, and I, in terms of, I'd like to explain your, your, your explanation of going up and down the neighborhood. They actually, they don't yeah. often do this, but they did actually. Uh, did a con looked at the immediate context, which you know, which they don't always do, and they said Re on review of the street. This is on page two. There are no other properties yep. on this block with a similar condition. Vega is a long street that goes up and out to Weston Road. Although there are some sites close to the Weston end road end of the street that do that do that. Uh, there's a typo there, but that something about do have a front condition. They're located at the far end of Cayuga and are not considered part of the immediate context. And then they go on to say it creates a pit-like condition, not ideal for safety and maintenance. <laughs> but they did. But it's funny because they don't often do that. But they have sort of anticipated. So can you just respond to your issue of your saying your context situation because they're claiming that the ones that do have are not part of the immediate context. Because they're up close. Well, to I've Western never, Road. I've never, I've never seen planning limit their review of the neighborhood to one block. I find it strange. Uh, I mean, we, uh, yes, of course, Cayuga is a long street, but and you know, our house happens to be a detached house, which is kind of unusual in the neighborhood. A lot of them are semis um, that look kind of the same, but. Uh, like have that same sort of triplex look, uh, but are actually uh, divided in two. Mm -hmm. So they have much narrower lots, but I don't, you know, obviously these front yard walkouts were approved by somebody. Um, it's kind of hard to. Um, or are they pre without, without having a permit. <laughs> yeah. So I just, I find it strange and I, Personally, it's an aesthetic thing. I don't think it will look ugly. Um, I don't think that it will look like a pit. I think it will create a lot of sunshine in the basement apartment. I think it will give them the tenants down there a bit of outdoor space, which is their own and private. Um, I think it can be landscaped uh, beautifully with a nice wrought iron railing as some of those pictures in the um, in the image file show. So, I mean, I. I can see where planning and wh why the bylaw potentially want didn't want this kind of situation to happen because they don't want, you know, maybe they don't want it to look messy on the street or something. I don't know. Or, uh, but I don't think that that is necessarily the case. Uh, I guess what you are in, in your favor, you are increasing, uh, you know, affordable housing. You're, you're, this is yes. improving the quality of the basement apartments, I guess, for, in terms of light yep. and access and safety, not having to. You're saying there's no other opportunity to put in an entrance on the side or the back? No. Okay. I mean, yes, I could put one on the side, but it would be very tight uh, and it would be right up against the fence. So this, 
allows for light and a bit of outdoor space, like those images of the London walkouts, you know, the down the lower level, or even some of the ones here in, in uh, Toronto. I'm in Cabbage Town and we have lots of front yard walkouts uh, and they're approved by both Heritage and typically um, zoning, okay. uh, not zoning, but and a committee. So anyway, that was, we just feel that there's, I, I'd like the discussion to happen with you uh, with regards to those uh, those two variances. Okay. And okay. it's interesting to note that if I wasn't putting in a basement apartment, I could put this thing in, no problem. I'd have to adjust the, you know, the front yard soft landscaping, which I could do, but there's no issue if it's a single family house. Could happen tomorrow, but only because it's a second unit are they penalizing us uh, from doing this. So, so the other uh, variances are with regards to the garage. Um, we are fine with the uh, planning yeah. um, condition for not making it habitable space. That's not the intention at all. There's no bathroom in there. There's, you know, we could go. We're on a lane, but it's not our intention to create a laneway suite. This is merely uh, an enlargement of the existing garage space. Our, our client, my client, is an artist, an installation artist, and so he'll he'll keep parking there, but he'll also have his studio there oh. um, to do his work, his art. Okay, let's see, Ms. Boone, if uh, someone, anyone has any questions for you. So I think the only issue, I don't think there's an issue with the garage other than the condition, which you've said is acceptable. Uh, it is yep. size, but doesn't seem to be any issue with community with planning. It's just the issue of the uh, front entrance and the uh, the front basement walkout. So any questions uh, for Ms. Kuhn or or someone ready to make a motion? Mr. Chair, I find the variances to be uh, in keeping with the four tests under the Planning Act, and I move approval. Um, subject to there being no habitable space in the garage. So the condition uh, as worded by community planning on that. Okay, thank yeah. you. Seconded by Ms. Ruddick. All in favor? You have unanimous approval, Ms. Kuhn. Thank you very much. Thank have a great you. day. Okay, item, we have two items left on this morning's agenda. Item number 18 is 140 Lothian Avenue. This is an application to construct a two-story front addition, a second-story addition above the existing dwelling. There are five variances. Um, other than the materials submitted with the application, we have... Uh, transportation condition of approval. I'm not sure if we have urban forestry or not. On this. Uh, I think so, yeah. just to say. Okay. And that's all we have. We have one registered speaker being the agent, Mirka Kuleza. Mirka? Hello? Hello, Mirka. Oh. You're Good the morning. agent on 140 Lothian? Yes, I am the agent for 140 Lothian. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so uh, good morning. Good morning. You're aware of the transportation conditions proposed? Yes, they are. They are basically four standard notes that we have already added to the yep. site plan. And uh, the forestry condition was that the owner has to apply for and get a tree removal permit, which has already been done, and the permit has been paid for already. Right. Other than that, so we have these five are the only conditions. Yeah, we have. No comments from area neighbors with objections or concerns. Uh, no mm -hmm. comment from community planning. So it's uh, quite straightforward. Let's see if committee members have any questions for you. Or if okay. not, if someone's ready to make a motion on this application. I'm prepared to make a motion on this application. Um, a motion to approve the variance request for 140 Lothian Avenue. I find the application to be minor in nature and consistent with the principles of the Planning Act and the official plan. 
subject to the conditions in forestry. And the transportation? And, and, and transportation. And transportation, I believe they had yes. transportation. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ruddick. I'll, Seconder for that. I'll second the motion. Thank you, Mr. Bellissimo. All in favor, unanimous approval. Thank, thank you, you very Ms. Coleza. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and I will see you this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> okay. We look, we look forward to it. Okay. <laughs> well, our okay. Our last item on the morning agenda is item 2703, the Queensway. And this is an application to permit a parking deficiency. Um, the one variance is a minimum of nine parking spaces are required for the dental office use and two parking spaces are required for the two dwelling units and a total of three spots will be provided. Um, transportation is recommending deferral on this application. The agent uh, or the owner, Karj, Karnjit Mang Mangat. Uh, yes, sir. sir, you're with us? So yes, we have supporting good morning, material. Uh, we have site-specific yes. zoning bylaw. We have supporting material about a parking availability, and we have the memo from transportation. Sir, you're aware of the transportation memo? Yes, I just read it, but I did not fully understand it. Yes, I read the memo. Okay, let me just pull it up here. So this is their app. They want deferral of this application. A lot of deferral requests today. Um, Yeah, so your your variances are, uh, you know, you need 11 spots, nine right. for the dental office, two for the rest, two dwelling units, and you only have three. Um, it says you're not eligible for on-site parking. So it says you are either, yes. you either under the site-specific zoning bylaw, um, it says four spots are proposed on-site. You must accept submit acceptable documentation to justify the parking deficiency of seven spaces and alternatively to either lease off-site parking and that spots would have to be accessed to that uh, the site's requirement or to provide okay. city with payment in lieu of parking. So what they're suggesting is it be deferred so that you work that out with transportation. Okay, so I have to contact them first for this to get an approval for the permit well they're saying that prior to us giving you the variance uh they would like it to be uh deferred to allow you the opportunity to either revise your proposal or submit documentation to address the above requirement so you either have to justify give documentation to justify your parking deficiency of seven spaces or leaf lease, okay. or lease those seven spots off-site which would have to be okay. close by and access to the requirement of that site or give the city payment in lieu of parking. Okay, so this hearing is going to be done again after this if I even pay yes. them? Yes, yes. They want you to defer so you decide which way you're going to go and whether you're going to pay the city payment in lieu of parking or you're going to lease those spots or you're going to justify the deficiency. I don't know. They should, have done that. To... they should have recommend you do that before you brought this application on. But what can we do? Yes, they did not. I had. I was not aware. That. I've been waiting for seven to eight months for this permit. I've lost a lot of money because of this reason. I'm not even sure what to do with this now. I thought that's what we're, that's what I'm doing this today. So I, I can, I'm going to get a approval to pay for it, and then I can go pay for the parking. Yeah, you either have to pay for permit. it, like I told, as I just read to you, there's three ver three options. You can either explain why you should right. be allowed a deficiency of seven spots, either to go rent those seven spots elsewhere, obviously not uh -huh. miles away, or to make right. a deal with the city and pay them for the de parking deficiency. On the theory that the city uses this money to to buy or rent parking facilities, you know, in the general area, not necessarily right. in your area. But that's what they want. Okay. One of those three things you have to decide before you come back. And I guess they're saying whichever works out the best for you. And we'll, we'll come back to this uh, committee of adjustment hearing well, you'll, again? You'll, you'll contact staff. They'll have to re-notify you. But you have to decide which of those three options you wish to 
try to do either. And it sounds like you're saying you're, you're happy to pay, but I don't even if you know how much that is for those seven no, I'm deficient not sure. parking spots. So that's why I think it's you have to decide what to do. I'm I'm sorry that you're saying you're waiting eight months for this, and perhaps if you know you receive this letter, it looks it's only dated uh, September end of September September 25th. 29. Oh my goodness. It says May. Oh no, that's Can transportation. You're right. The transportation memo is the 29th. Mm -hmm. So. I haven't even got the letter yet. So I have a sorry. Uh, sorry to take your time. I just have a quick question. Like, if I let's say if I find out what, how much it is and if I'm okay to pay for it, do I have to schedule a hearing again? Mm. Yes, I assume, Madam Secretary. Oh. Treasurer. So yes. you you'll have to talk to Transportation Services. The cash and payment lieu of parking has to be approved by council. And it is quite expensive, so you may not choose to purchase all of the deficient parking spaces. And mm -hmm. what you may decide to do is pay for a certain amount and come to committee for the balance. Or see if you can also get uh, off lease, off site parking through a lease with someone else who has extra parking available. So you can't cause a variance on the other site. So that's why Transportation Services has asked for a deferral so you can talk to them, talk about the options, and then come mm -hmm. back to committee for whatever you still need in terms of a variance. Is it so next committee hearings, is, it's next year, right? Right now, we don't have dates scheduled for next year yet, but if you are deferred, you oh. would not be heard in 2020. So, Mr. Mangat, you see what, what she's suggesting as well. You're deficient in seven spaces. So, city plan, uh, the transportation department may say, okay, pay for three and we'll agree that you can be deficient four. I'm just throwing out numbers or five and two, or, uh, you know, I don't know what it is, but maybe you can work out something where they will be supportive of a deficiency of not seven, but maybe right. pay for four, deficiency three, you know, something in that in that nature. I don't know. And then you can come back and, and have it rescheduled uh, on an agenda. But right now, like I said, you don't know which of your, you don't know how much they're going to ask you for also. So, But that is not my biggest issue is waiting another three months to get a committee of adjustments date to get a, because I, my permit is already delayed. We are like four months going into, you know, because of COVID, our business was already shut down. I don't know yes. what to do now. Yeah. So you're waiting permission in order to build Yes, in order to build to start the build, and I'm so stuck right now. I don't know what to do. Where am I going to get the money from to get keep going uh, so for another so, three months? So uh, this this dental office and two residential units are not built yet. No, there's a, no dental uh, dental office. We haven't started the construction yet. I see. I mean, we're waiting for a permit to start the construction, and I was waiting because of COVID, and then I got the letter really late, and then I got it's three months delayed to get this hearing date. When I got the hearing date, now I gotta have to wait another three months. I so, am not gonna. I don't know. Is, hold on, sir. Madam Secretary Treasurer, could we perhaps proceed on the basis if we? And I'm just throwing this out because of the agent is the owner is saying it's creating a hardship for him uh, because of COVID. He's been carrying this prop this project. Could we give approval subject to him working that out with transportation, or that it couldn't doesn't work that way? Um, it's. So that way he wouldn't have to come back, make it uh, approve his three spots, but only subject to him dealing with transportation for the balance. I'm willing to work whatever I'm, it is. I'm, with I'm just asking staff, sir. I'm asking yeah. staff if there's okay, some possible you. way of thank doing you. it that way. It is possible. It's just um, if he's not able to satisfy transportation services, he will not get a permit. And again, yes. the cash in lieu is subject to council approval. Mm. So we can't guarantee that you'll get approval for that, which means that you won't have anything available to you. Okay. So as long as I can get a permit to construct, I mean, I'm but willing to do But you won't get a permit right is. away because you still need council approval for the yeah. cash in lieu. And I don't imagine that council is scheduling on a very short frame either. So you'll have to talk to transportation services to find out what the process mm -hmm. is to obtain cash in lieu of parking. Okay, so and if I if and I, the residential yes. and any parking required for the residential unit is not 
able to be obtained through cash in lieu, only the commercial. Right, I totally understand so that. He would provide um, the, the two wisdom. for residential, and then he has yeah. two he has to provide for the residential, and only one of the other ones for a deficiency of seven. But as right. the Secretary Treasurer was explaining, what I was trying to do is find a way that we could give you your approval and so you wouldn't have to come back here at the end of the day after you work it out, but it sounds like that's not going to work because of the council requirement to approve cash in lieu. And it sounds like you're going to have to have cash in lieu unless, because you'd have to find seven parking spots on another lot close by that that, that other site didn't need to meet their own requirements for that site. I understand so that. There's I nothing we can do, I guess. The committee could put in a condition. I mean, it the it's not ideal, but saying the applicant is required to either lease off-site parking or provide the city with payment in lieu of parking. Or some combination thereof to the satisfaction of who? I'm just cautioning the applicant yeah. that that's not going to be, a, you're not getting a permit in a month right. with that. But at least this will help you, you won't have to come back here. That will be great. If I can do that, that would okay. really help me. So, sir, when did, like I understand, this this happened because of COVID, I guess, when did you originally uh, make your application? Or perhaps... The application was that. made uh, after COVID, uh, I think yeah. it was in June or July. I originally okay. started the application in January, but because of COVID, it was delayed. And then I finally heard in right. July, June or July about this. Yeah, and this is obviously I'm gonna carrying keep... you, costs you money to carry the property with this It cost me a lot of money. This application was submitted August 10th. Yeah, so uh, that's when I heard from uh, from the city that in July, I heard that when they came back from COVID, I spoke to the examiner. He told me it's because of parking, you have to go to committee of adjustment. It took me a month to get a new survey done and get everything started again. I know it's been about almost about eight, nine months that I'm carrying this property, which is getting a really, really tough for me. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Maggot. Let's, let's bring it into committee and see if we can get that motion to help you. So thank you. Panel members, uh, Madam Secretary Treasurer is suggesting we can do this, try to accommodate uh, the applicant by giving him his approval and dealing with the transportation issue in a condition. So, Madam Secretary Treasurer, you have the wording for that, if assuming one of the two, we have a motion to that effect, and the committee members don't feel that uh, we should just defer it and have them deal with transportation and then come back. So, is anyone ready to make that motion? For a motion? Yeah, Mr. Chair, in the interest of uh, expediting or smoothing the process that the applicant has to go through here, um, I move approval of the variance on the grounds that it meets the four tests under the Planning Act. And that approval would be subject to satisfying the Transportation Department by having either the submission by the applicant of, an accept, of acceptable documentation to justify the parking deficiency of seven spaces, or uh, having the applicant lease off-site parking or provide the city with uh, payment in lieu of parking. Or some combination thereof. Or some combination thereof. Getting some to the satisfaction of the transportation department. So the first part of that, can I suggest um, the submitting a acceptable documentation for the deficiency was for them to review rather than something as a condition. The second part would be okay. The applicant is required to either lease off-site parking or provide the city with payment in lieu of parking or a combination of both to the satisfaction of transportation services. I accept that as a very friendly and extremely helpful amendment. Yeah. And is there some reference to the deficiency of seven? Should we have actually reference to the actual number in there or? Well, they'll have to sign off, so they'll figure out which. Okay, because that's that's basically the, the variance anyway. It's... Okay, so we have a motion okay. for Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Uh, second over that is Reddick. All in favor? You have unanimous approval, Mr. Manget. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks a lot. It really okay, ho me hopefully that helps you day. to uh, you know get things done a little quicker. Then uh, yeah. so you should get Thank in touch you. with transportation. And try to work that out as soon as you can. I'm going to get Obviously, in touch with Thank you. Appeal period, but in any event. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. You. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, and, and we are now stand adjourned until 1 p.m. And we will deal with the afternoon agenda. Great. We have awesome. one time slot, yeah. right, in the afternoon? Yeah. What do you guys do for lunch? Where do you, where's there to go? Really? And where is that? In, it's on the, yeah, I was remote. And I got, um, I parked, yeah, I parked way at the south building. I got thrown off by the construction, so I'm going to come around. So when you say, yeah, I'll bring it closer. Yeah, I parked right out there last time. Yeah. So the, the Tim Hortons is on that side of the street as well. Uh, Burnett's up in yeah. the mall? Okay. Yeah, I got lots of time today. Yeah, I gotta go. I don't know what I want. Okay. I'm going home. Yeah, I'll drive there because I gotta move the car anyway. So, and I've got plenty of time, right? Back by one, and I don't know what I want. So, all of the above suggest I drive. So, I think it's on the second floor of the south. I think so. Thank you, Doctor.